Hi, I'm Jennifer of Celtic Knot Crochet, and today in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a handheld hummingbird feeder. Every summer, I love to watch the hummingbirds come to my backyard. They're so fascinating and so beautiful. Last year, we started holding a special handheld feeder and loved having them come up so close. Unfortunately, that handheld feeder that we had purchased is no longer available. So I decided to make my own using crochet and a few very basic supplies that I'll show you in the video. And if you don't know how to crochet, don't worry. I also show you how you can make this without crocheting so you can feed the hummers with your hands. So let's get started. Let's go over the supplies you'll need for your handheld hummingbird feeder. First thing, if you're going to crochet the flowers, you will need size 3 cotton crochet thread. I like to use Lisbeth. You can find it in the link in the description below. Comes in great colors and this red is a Christmas red, so vibrant and bright the hummingbirds love it. You'll also need a 2.75 millimeter or C crochet hook. This works great with the size 3 yarn. And I really like the clover hooks with the silicone handles. So that's for the crochet part. You'll also need a tapestry needle, a yarn needle, that has a nice point on the bottom because you'll need it to pierce through some plastic. So most yarn needles are very dull so you want to make sure you use one that's nice and sharp that can poke through thin plastic. You'll also need scissors and then to do the actual piece that holds the sugar water for the hummingbirds, you'll want a flower water tube. You can find them on Amazon, that's where I got mine. Again, there'll be a link in the description below where you can buy ones just like this. I got a pack of, I think, over 20, and the top is a nice green flexible plastic. It's very easy to take on and off so you can refill it and it stays on there very nicely, you can see. And the pack I got also came with these long green matching dowels that you can insert into the base, which extends the arm if you want to start using it this way where the hummingbirds were farther away from you and then you could gradually hold it closer. Uh, and these are also good for arrangements. So that's a nice option to have this longer dowel to add on. Uh, other supplies that you'll need, just again, all of these are in the description below. You'll want to pick up some very inexpensive silk flowers at your local discount store. Now if you want to make this handheld feeder without crocheting, then you'll want to get some red ones. Now what I was looking for is some red simple flowers like these, but then I also looked hard at the pieces of the flowers, and if you see, this one has what I'm looking for. It has a little tube on the back with this these green plastic pieces that go around the back of the petals and then you have these fake stamens here in the center and you can pull these two pieces apart 
and you can see how that takes the petals away and you have the stamens here and then this back piece and this you can use it's optional for either the crochet or the silk flowers but you want to find some flowers that have this piece that's removable and I'll show you what to do with it later and the last thing you'll want is some 14 gauge galvanized wire I buy this very inexpensively at my local home improvement store. I get a hundred feet for less than ten dollars and I use it for all kinds of things. It bends very easily, cuts easily, but it's also nice and strong and it can hold a lot of weight. Of course for this we don't need a lot of weight but we want something that's nice and stiff to hold the feeder when we're not using it. So you'll need about 24 inches of that. And to go along with the wire, it's always helpful to have some wire cutters that can also be pliers to help you bend the wire because 14 gauge is thick and can be difficult if you're just using your hands. If you like this video and this project, make sure to give us a thumbs up or click to subscribe so you can see more tutorials like this. Now I'm going to show you how to crochet this flower. It's only about an inch and a half across, uh, but that's plenty for the hummingbirds to be attracted to it. And you would crochet it with the size 3 yarn, but I'm going to show you with some thicker yarn so it's easier to see the stitches. So you put your slip knot on the hook and you're going to chain 2. Then you're going to work into that first chain. So it's the second one from the hook and you're going to put 6 single crochets right inside there. So that was 1 and I'm going to keep putting a whole bunch in there single crochet is you put your hook in, yarn over, pull through the stitch, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. So I've done three, I need to do three more, four, five, last one, hook in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And then I can check my work and I see I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Then I'm going to insert my hook through that first stitch, yarn over, pull through the stitch, and through the loop on my hook, and that's a slip stitch to close it up. And you see by working in that stitch and cramming all six single crochets, it creates this nice little hole, and that's what you have right here a hole right at the center of the flower and that's where the hummingbirds instinctively insert their beak so that they can slurp up all that yummy syrup. So that's all you need. You can have a hole actually even smaller than that and it would work just fine. Now we have just one more row to make the petals. One more round. So you're going to chain three and you're going to do a two treble cluster. So you want to yarn over twice, put your hook into the same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. Now I have four loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through two, through two, and stop right there. Now I'm going to do that step again. Yarn over twice, hook into the same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, five loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now I have three loops up on my hook, yarn over, pull through all three, and that's what brings all those stitches together in a nice cluster shape. And then I chain three more, slip stitch back in that same stitch that we started. And by putting all those together in one stitch, we get a nice petal shape. And we're going to do that in each stitch around. So I'll show you that again. Slip stitch in the next stitch, chain three, 
yarn over twice, hook into the same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, then yarn over, pull through two, through two, and stop. Then yarn over twice again, hook in, yarn over, pull through stitch, yarn over, pull through two, through two, and stop, and then yarn over, pull through all three, and then chain three. And insert my hook for another slip stitch. So I'm going to do that four more times, one petal in each of the single crochets, all the way around to complete the flower. Here you can see that I've repeated the petals all the way around. So I have six petals and then I'm just going to cut the yarn, pull through the loop to make a knot, and my flower is finished. You could see here with the smaller flower. That's all there is to it. So now I want to show you an option that you could do with the flowers. It is not necessary. Uh, the feeders that I've made, I do not use this piece, um, but you might find that your hummingbirds prefer it. So what I did is I took this part apart, the two pieces, took my scissors and I trimmed these stamens, they don't need to be anywhere near that long. Trim those off. Then you can insert that through the center of the flower and then you can lock it on by putting this piece over the back of that little tube. Squeeze those together and it's nice and anchored on. You don't have to use any glue. And the hummingbirds, you can see the hole right there. They can put their tiny beaks right through there and it's very similar to a real flower. So if you would like to do that, you can. Again, it's optional. And then I use these yarn tails here to attach the flower to this top plastic piece. Now mine came with a vent hole and the center hole. So I used this to my advantage. So if I put this right inside, then I will put my needle right through that hole that came with it, the smaller side hole. And then I'm going to bring the needle up through the plastic. Like that till it's nice and taut. And then go through the petals of the flower. And I'm going to do it by inserting the needle through the loops on the backs of the stitches. And this is going to secure the flower to this top. And then I'll insert back down through that first hole. And now it's not going anywhere. And I'm going to repeat that on the other side of the flower, on this side. And then inside you can see I'll have two stitches. So I went up and down twice 
on this side and I'll do the same on the other side. Here you can see the two versions of the flower. Here it is with the plastic stamen and you see how I sewed it on with the yarn tails and you can see that tube sticking through or you can sew it on same manner like so with the yarn tails without this plastic piece. I've had the hummingbirds come a lot with it just like this. You fill up the tube with your sugar water, pop that on top, and there you go. And if you want to make one without crochet, this is what you're going to do. You're going to take those, the stamen off of a silk flower that you can find that has that back piece. Sometimes they're hard to break apart, but they're just popped together. And the pink flower would probably work, but the hummingbirds really like red. So I'm going to take off this piece here so I have some petals. So now I have these red petals. I could even trim them and make them smaller if I wanted to. And then I want to trim the stamens because this is long, not necessary. Insert this tube piece through the center of the petals. Then pop this back star-like piece onto the back and that'll sandwich the petals in between. So now you have a new flower. We just borrowed parts from another one. Now if the water tube that you get has a large hole like this one does, then you can use the same technique by taking some yarn or uh, some sewing thread and you can pierce through like so and come back out around the star edge on the back to catch that in there. And you can see the stitch way down in there. And then all you need to do is tie a knot and do that on both sides. Tie a nice strong knot. And that will keep the flower on there. I would cut that. and I would repeat that on the other side. I could go up through the hole that's already there, the smaller side hole. Go back down on the other side of that star piece on the back. It's very easy to go through these plastic tops here. Tie another knot double knot so it's nice and secure. Okay. And that's not going anywhere. Alright, so now that I have it sewn and knotted, I just pop it on top after I filled it with the sugar water. And there we go. We have three different types of handheld hummingbird feeders. One more step that I like to do is I like to create a holder for this feeder. That way the hummingbirds can come 
and get used to it without me having to stand out there for hours holding it, but then I can take it out of the holder very easily to feed them by hand when I'm ready. So that's where the 14 gauge wire comes in handy. And I take one end of it and wrap it around the water tube. Just by holding it and twisting the tube. Okay, about that many times. I can use my pliers to curl it so the end closes up and the tube doesn't fall through like so. I can stretch it out, make it a little longer like this. And there you can see it's a nice simple holder. I can take the tube out and put it back in. And then I take this other end of the wire and this I wrap around the hook where I normally would hang my hummingbird feeder. And then it hangs like this and again I can come take it out, put it back in, the hummers can get used to it, come try it out. I can also adjust it, I can tilt it so that the sugar water makes it down to the end. Because this is very small it runs out quickly. So that's what I do to install it in the backyard. Let me show you how it works. Now that we've made our feeder, there are a few things we need to do before the hummingbirds will start coming to your yard. You want to make some sugar water according to certain specifications that are healthy for the birds. So I normally do three cups of water. I boil it, make sure it's a nice rolling boil, and then I add one cup of sugar stir it until it's completely dissolved, then I turn off the burner and let it cool completely. Once I have that done, then I use a recycled juice container. I make sure I wash it out thoroughly and I put the sugar water inside and keep it in my fridge and that way I can keep refilling these little hand feeders every time they empty and keep the food fresh. If you have a really warm day, you'll want to make sure that you change the water every day if it's super hot where you live or your feeders in the sun a lot. And just make sure that you clean the inside. Sometimes you see little bits of black um, getting around the inside of the tube and just take a little brush and make sure you clean that out. Next thing is if you already have hummingbirds coming to your yard, that's perfect. You have the perfect setup to start feeding them with the handheld feeder. If you don't, then you might want to get a feeder like you can see behind me here. I'll put the link in the description below and you can use that for a few days with that sugar water to start having them come to your yard. So every year, this is what we use, but when we're ready to use the handheld feeder, we take this feeder down and we take that wire holder that we just made and we place the handheld feeder inside the wire holder at a slight angle like that. So you'll want to wait and see if the hummingbirds come to the feeder while it's in the holder. We have found this summer that they love coming to the handheld feeder even when it's not being held by someone. So this way they're very used to the feeder and it's not much different once you hold it. So when you're ready, make sure you wear a red shirt or a bright neon orange shirt. You could also tie an orange ribbon to where you have the feeder. That will help attract them. So when you're ready with your red shirt, 
you just want to take the feeder out of the holder brace your arms we like to brace them on our deck railing hold it away from your face so it's not too close and too scary make sure it's tilted so they can get at the syrup inside and just wait and hold still and soon the hummingbirds will come they might come up near your face to check you out just be still and wait patiently and you'll get the best view seeing them so close you'll be able to hear their wings you'll be able to see their eyes blink you'll see their tiny little iridescent feathers so much fun so i hope you enjoyed this video hope you enjoyed making your own handheld hummingbird feeder make sure to give us a thumbs up or click to subscribe and don't forget to watch the next video